morning and welcome to The Big Question. I'm Masachaba Mushweshwe and this is the show that challenges you to think about your own morality. Recently, the Minister of Health, Mantu Chabala Lamsimang, said people living with HIV AIDS should have a choice over the AIDS treatment they want, nutritional, traditional or ARVs. This is after it emerged that Chabala Lamsimang held a meeting with Dr. Roth, the controversial vitamin entrepreneur, earlier this year. Dr. Roth has been lambasted for saying that vitamins are the solution to the HIV AIDS pandemic and that antiretrovirals are toxic and dangerous. So what is the truth about ARVs? Are they the best way to treat HIV AIDS? Yes, say the medical fraternity. They are up in arms about these alternative methods. They say they could be an added supplement to the treatment of HIV AIDS, but are under no circumstances a solution to the problem. They are 100% behind the supply of ARVs to HIV AIDS patients. Which brings us to tonight's big question. Are ARVs the most effective treatment for HIV AIDS? Leanne and Adam have been out looking for some answers. Hi, I'm arguing that antiretrovirals are the most effective treatment for HIV AIDS. South Africans are spending more time at funerals than having haircuts, going shopping or socializing at Bry's. Thorough re research has shown that ARVs save lives. My first guest is Dr. Ian Zane, Director of WITS Clinical HIV Research Unit. Dr. Zane, why do you say that ARVs are the most effective treatment for HIV AIDS? Leon, it's since the decision by the Cabinet in 2003 to provide antiretroviral therapy in a wide-scale rollout, we have been doing this across the country. At Helen Joseph Hospital, we've initiated over 3,000 patients on treatment. We know that antiretroviral therapy reduces the death due to AIDS by 90%, the risk of opportunistic infections by over 90%. We are convinced that they're not uh, they are not. Uh, they are better than providing no treatment at all. Thank you, Dr. Zane. My second guest is Dr. Horsi Litlape, chair of the South African Medical Association and involved in the Tsipang Trust, an AIDS treatment facility. Doctor, what do you think of the minister's statement that people should be allowed a choice of HIV/AIDS treatment? She is correct. People should be allowed a choice. They are not being allowed choices, and part of those choices are. Western medicine, and you'd go to a government clinic or a hospital for that. Mm -hmm. Traditional healing, spiritual healing, and even when you get into a government hospital situation, you'll be properly assessed and be given choices. Healthy living lifestyles, proper nutrition, and in the late stages of disease, life-saving antiretrovirals, which are a boon to mankind, which are ensuring that my lifespan is no longer 46 as a black male in South Africa. Thank you, Doctor. Well, let's see what medication Aaron wants to prescribe to our viewers. Nutrition, tradition, and lifestyle, Ian. That's the way to go. ARVs are toxic and dangerous. There is no evidence that ARVs will extend your life. Let's feed the hungry, uplift the poor, and adopt a holistic approach to HIV AIDS treatment. We don't have to poison our people in the process of helping them live healthy lives. My first guest is Dr. David Resnick, senior researcher of the Reth Foundation, presidential AIDS advisor and biochemist. Dr. Resnick, you say that prescribing ARVs to HIV AIDS patients, it's irrational and should be stopped immediately. That's true. The antiretroviral drugs are among the most toxic substances ever approved for human use. And it's not ever been shown that adults or children or fetuses in the womb taking these drugs live longer or at least better lives than a similar group of people not taking the drugs. Thank you, Dr. Resnick. My other guest is Prof. Sam Mlongo from Medunsa Campus, Family Medicine and Primary Health Care. Prof, you believe that ARVs are very toxic and they should be taken away from patients. Why? Well, they, they should be taken away, uh, particularly here in South Africa, because what we're dealing with here is uh, disease of poverty and malnutrition. There's no doubt about that. If you read a book which is prescribed for medical students and young doctors in South Africa, yeah, written by Kuvadia of all people, Kuvadia by all people, and uh, Wurttemberg, they clearly demonstrate the, in a chapter that uh, there is a condition called nutritional AIDS, which affects largely the, la the bulk of the population in South Africa. There's no question about that. You just have to ask questions. Who lives in uh, informal settlements? Who lives in run-down places? Who has no water? The figures speak for themselves. No question about that. 
Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Leanne. And thank you very much to our guests for coming through to our big question debate. Remember, you at home can also have your say. Vote for what you believe is right by phoning 083-920-3001. That's 083-920-3001. Or if you want to SMS, send the word yes or no to the same number. Before we start the debate, let's see what Leanne and Aaron got up to this week. <laughs> In 2003, government decided to provide the public health sector with antiretrovirals. This has given new hope to thousands of AIDS victims. Despite the dissident attack on ARVs, there is little doubt that the benefits of ARVs outweigh the risks. That's why I'm arguing that antiretrovirals are the most effective treatment for HIV AIDS. I disagree. The society has been indoctrinated by drug cartels who spend millions marketing ARVs. Do we dare question them? Worldwide, there's been people who've responded badly to ARVs, but have found other ways to live long, fulfilling, positive lives. That's why I'm arguing that antiretrovirals are not the most effective treatment for HIV AIDS. Tina van der Maas is a nurse whose nutritional program has won favor with her Minister of Health, Mandu Shabalalam Simang. Despite the fact that her program has had positive results for thousands of people, Tina is still regarded by many as a quack. Why are you so opposed to the use of ARVs? It never made sense to us that when people are sick, uh, to treat them with toxic chemicals. What makes a program better than all the other programs that doctors recommend? What we do is basically detoxify the body, treat the infections, and restore the biochemistry of the body. And once you do that, the body can take care of whatever problems there are. And the only way we have been able to detoxify uh, people properly is with uh, the lemons and the, and the olive oil mixture, the one that everybody keeps on making jokes about. What is the alternative if nutrition doesn't work? But nutrition does work. We've got people now on the program from 1998, and they're as healthy as can be. Well, when we met them, uh, for example, the one lady was at a CD4 count of 34, and she was 37 kilograms, was brought on the back of her mother to the support group, and she's fine today. Why haven't you been afforded an opportunity for a medical trial? They just keep on shouting, it can't work, and, uh, and uh, go away, foot sack, <laughs> all this. But the, the, the biggest proof I've got is live people that should have been dead. Why do you think that ARVs are given priority over other methods of treatment? Um, who will make money from garlic? or who will make money from ARVs. And it's not just the ARVs, it's your laboratories, it's your liver function tests, it's your viral load counts, your CD4 counts, all those things. It's a huge, huge industry. Now you come, one rand and 50 cents and <laughs> 30 cents and you can grow it in your own garden. Who's going to earn money from that? I think the government must start giving AZT to infected pregnant mothers. Gail Johnson, Corsi's foster mother, continues to crusade on behalf of mothers and children living with HIV AIDS. There's no doubt about it that ARV um, definitely assists in lengthening the lifespan. Um, moms that we've had here at Corsi's Haven have gone from 28 kgs to 55. So you see a difference. They feel different. And you know, isn't it imperative that we lengthen the lifespan of a parent so that, please God, we reduce the number of AIDS orphans in our environment? Speak to me about kids on ARV treatment. My kiddies here that are on ARV, they're bursting out of their genes. They're doing well. We've got to assist in preventing mother-to-child transmission. There's nothing worse than seeing a little coffin this big and burying a baby this big that maybe could have been born negative. We've got children who are traumatized. We've got child-headed households, kids of 9, 10. How dare we ask a child to head a household? If we can make our kiddies safe, then we must do that. And if it means ARV and a package, do it. The host of Kai FM's show, Positive Talk, Criselda Kananda, has been living healthily with HIV without the aid of ARVs for over seven years. Criselda believes in a holistic approach to treatment, and while ARVs have their place, she doesn't believe they are the most effective treatment to HIV. 
It's my turn. I do have uh, reservations on the way we've introduced antiretrovirals. We've introduced them as when you test HIV positive, you don't, if you don't have access to antiretrovirals, you die. When I was diagnosed with HIV, it felt like there's nothing else that could be done. And through reading and learning as much as I can, I've actually saved this precious life of mine and that of my child because I was pregnant when I discovered my status. And I've never been on antiretrovirals. Why do you think that ARVs are prioritized above other methods of treatment? In my personal view is that people have personal gains within um, uh, uh, the rolling out of antiretrovirals. Not much effort is put on what other options are available. It's, it's almost like we, we ruled by the scientific way of, of managing HIV. And for me, that is unfortunate because within South Africa, there's so much more, especially in Africa. There's so much more that we can teach the world. I think science is about time they really come to party and, and research on what spiritual, spirituality does um, to an HIV positive person, what um, psychological well-being does to an HIV positive person, what nutrition does. Because for me, as a person living with HIV, it gave me hope that I, I, I don't have to really sit in a corner and wait to die. There's so much that I can do for myself. And, and that's the hope we've taken away from millions of people. You basically just need to live and live and live. That's all, live. It's not enough sometimes, Mary. You're not sick. You two are gonna end up on, on Golden Pond in matching white wicked rockers. Award-winning actor, director, author of In Around, Through and Out, Blaise Koch, has been internationally recognized as one of the most outstanding intellectuals of the 21st century. When Blaise was told he was HIV positive, the diagnosis was terminal. After seven years of ARV treatment, his life is more positive than it's ever been. Well, on a positive note, let's go and view a sunset. Come on. What proof have you seen as to how effective ARVs are? Well, firstly, I have myself as proof that I witnessed uh, within three weeks of taking ARVs, I saw my own life return. And uh, I certainly have witnessed first-hand cases um, and seen life return to the dying. Uh, beyond that, I think it's a worldwide known fact that ARVs have given people the chance to return to society as productive, healthy human beings. There is no question in my mind as to their effectiveness. How do you feel about people like Dr. Roth and other dissidents who are really opposed to ARVs? It's absolutely absurd that we do not take what science has given us to control and monitor this disease and reject that. It's insane. It makes no sense at all. It's like rearranging the deck chairs on a sinking Titanic. There is no doubt this drug, drug saves lives. What's your message to people living with HIV and AIDS? My message to them is to grasp this disease and turn it into the most positive thing that's ever happened to them. Because I know that one is creatively challenged by this virus to realize that huge gift called life. Dr. Rasnick, let's start with you. Here is Blaze, who was at the end of his life, and he says that <laughs> ARV treatment gave him his life back. How can you ignore the thousands of people that are living today because of ARVs? All I can say is, who would you rather look like? Uh, that gentleman who took the antiretrovirals or that woman who didn't? Let's go can I, can I answer that? <clears throat> Dr. Letlaba? Uh, the gentleman who took antiretrovirals chose to live and not to die because he was in a late stage of his illness. That healthy, beautiful looking lady is in the early stages of illness. And for that stage, antiretrovirals are not needed and are not advisable. We have 5 million people living with HIV and AIDS. For more than 4 million, they don't need to be on ARVs. And healthy living. And, you know, basic advice from your traditional healers, people that have served you for ages before the Rath Foundation set foot here. Your grandmother, just living healthily, mm -hmm. exercising, eating well, 
will keep it out. The key issue here, Mas Chaba, is that our people must test early. So that when you test early, and you're able to be put on life-saving regimens, not drugs, let's, let's, but let's, lifestyle management. Let's throw it and over. at that point, vitamins are important. Proper foodstuffs are important. Healthy living is important. Let's but when you get to Dr. the Letape. late stages... Dr. Letape says, um, Professor Mshangwa, that you know, the, the, the treatment that we have had all along, traditional um, medicine, the advice of our grandmothers, are we following that? Is the traditional medicine being looked at in the same light as Western medicine? Well, uh, I don't think so. I don't think uh, the, the evidence runs counter to that. Uh, the medical prof profession does not seem to uh, encourage uh, alternative therapies when it comes to the question of uh, AIDS. Uh, I actually advise traditional uh, healers uh, uh, via ICSA, ICSA, which is uh, uh, the retention and the maintenance of uh, traditional knowledge systems uh, based in Pretoria. Uh, and uh, we're building a, a huge place in uh, uh, what was called Flag Plus mm -hmm. to help traditional leads. I'm deeply involved in it, and I don't think it is correct to say that lady is healthy. That's why she doesn't need this. The Deben Declaration in, in, in the year 2000 by people who support this HIV hypothesis said that within five years you go down with full-blown AIDS. Now that is seven years. Dr. Zane, uh, so, why is that? So why, why is it that we are not giving traditional medicines the platform to see if they will work? So, you know, Master Chaba, we must start somewhere else. We must start with an understanding of HIV as a disease. It, it's, a, it's a virus that causes an infection in the immune system that progressively leads to the decline of the immune system. And once there has been a decline, then the significant weight loss and the resultant opportunistic infections. We know from studies done in Uganda that an average of 11 years is the, the non-ARV lifespan of an individual who's infected with HIV. That means that there's a, there's, a, there's a wide range. Some people, the disease will go faster, and for others, the disease will go slower. We know that there's a pre-heart stage from a treatment point of view where we can do many things for people. Most of them are psychosocial, support counseling, holding people well in, in their environment, mm -hmm. and vitamins. Sure, I agree with that. There's a position probably also for complementary and alternative medicines within that. However, once people have advanced and signs of opportunistic infections start emerging, then we need to move on to ARVs. And I don't believe, so your question was, why do we not entertain complementary medicines? Well, we need the evidence to really support their treatment. I have my own grants, in fact, in traditional medicines and uh, we've applied for funding with the National Complementary and Alternative Medicine Center in the United States for the, for the study of, of complementary medicines. Uh, to date, however, the problem is that uh, medicines such as Sutherlandia lead to significant drug interactions with our ARVs. We know ARVs save lives, so how can we combine the two at the same time? Well, I'd like to know where you get uh, uh, the evidence from. Here's what, uh, that, uh, that these drugs are life-saving, the antiretrovirals. Here's what Glaxo says about its nucleoside analog, Ziogen. At this time, quote, at this time there is no evidence that Ziogen will help you live longer or have fewer of the medical problems associated with HIV AIDS, end quote. Merck is no more encouraging about its protease inhibitor, quote, it is not yet known whether Crixavan will extend your life or reduce your chances of getting other illnesses associated with HIV, end quote. The disclaimer that comes with Beringer Ingelheim's Viramine, which South Africans know better as Nivirapine reads, at present there are no results from controlled clinical trials evaluating the effects of Viramune on the incidence of opportunistic infections and survival. And finally, we have Glaxo's uh, combination of two nucleoside analogs called Combivir. It, it's the most disturbing of all. It says simply, quote, there have been no clinical trials conducted on Combivir. So where do you, you, no, 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 where do you get your I, evidence that, that people live longer on these drugs? <laughs> so so uh, the, Dr. Resnick, as usual, is completely quoting out of context. The, the uh, uh, clinical research done to, in fact, register these medicines has been widely practiced. And luckily, 
I have in the past conducted pharmaceutically funded uh, research, but today I'm completely funded by government funding for antiretroviral, uh, antiretroviral therapy research. So I have complete independence of the pharmaceutical industry. That means that I can make unequivocally the statement that we have conducted studies after registration that have demonstrated both antiviral efficacy, lowering the virus in the blood, and improvement longevity with disease survival, in other words, reducing death rates in randomized clinical trials that, uh, and over the last decade, we have an enormous body of evidence that to, to uh, unequivocally support mm -hmm. uh, the use of antiretroviral uh, therapy. Uh, Master Chubb, Chub, 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 December 2003, through the help of the Nelson Mandela Foundation, Tata Madiba, we started a treatment program in Juosta Hospital. Up until the end of March, 289 patients were put on treatment. Two died, 287 are still alive. The attitude and the atmosphere in just the hospital has improved. The people use it because they know that you go there, you have a chance of coming alive. People were coming, people were dying. Dr. This Rose, there, drug is very important. Is no and and w w what is characteristic about what he says is that none of the things that he talks about <laughs> refer to triple therapy. Now, these drugs in combinations save Lives. Nice. And, no, and the point let, is, it's not an how, you know know that. Save lives. how do you know that? There because is no let, let me tell trial let, nowhere, let me anywhere tell in the published literature okay, I'll, I'll, that shows that people let, taking the antiretroviral drugs let, live let, longer or better lives let me compared tell you, to a similar let me tell group of people about, not taking the drugs. Let me tell you about the ARDs. The problem is that you do not listen. If you know the example. There's nothing to listen to Professor Amklong. You're not saying much. What's there to listen to? No, but he's talking now. I, was, I, I waited for you. Tell me one study. I don't care what the study was. A controlled clinical trial that showed that people taking the antiretroviral drugs live longer or better lives than a similar group of people not taking those drugs. Okay. I'll, go, I'll go better than a study. Okay. Better than a study. I'll go, into my, I'll, go, I'll go into my own family. Okay? Where I have buried nieces and nephews and uncles. Okay? And one of them delayed taking ARVs because of the confusion about their toxicity. And the person was very sick. They are on triple therapy at the expense of the South African government, for which we are eternally grateful. And that family member is still alive. Now, you come here and you throw things at us like we idiots, like we don't know what choices mean. As the minister said, give people choices. Professor, this is not an either-or situation. Yeah. This is a situation where our people are dying. ARVs make a difference. Dr. If you show us in proper studies that your vitamins will do the same as triple therapy has done for our relatives, we'll embrace your products and give them to the people. Dr. So Dr. do Dr. proper studies. And Dr. people Letape, are dying. Yeah. Dr. Letape, let's, just, let's bring uh, in actually, some other. Actually, proper studies, you know, randomized control studies have been asked for, but none are coming. Um, but uh, the, the position is, is this. Uh, I am not prepared to accept uh, anecdotal uh, evidence, you know, from myself or from, from uh, Dr. Letape. I am interested as a medical scientist in, in, in proper research uh, output and uh, conclusions Professor and subjected Samson. to a debate. Uh, let me, let me Professor come in there and, and the say to you... The 289 patients, we will give you their clinical profiles, their CD4 counts, their toxicity reactions they've had, the, the switches where the switches have been made. Opposite your own clinic, Please, it's a clinic called please Tepang. publish what? those. Please publish those results, and we'll that be debated. Yes, they will. They will be published. There's a collective report that has come from government you on the more saying, than fifty thousand patients that are been, treated. Your, your side Zana? have been saying this from two thousand, and up to now, we okay. have not come across. I'm actually going to get my voice heard at this point. Thank you, <laughs> gentlemen. We need to take a short break. We will come back after the break. Remember to call during the break and cast your vote. Are ARVs the most effective treatment for HIV AIDS? Have your say. Phone or SMS us the word yes or no to 083 920 3001 and we'll have the final results at the end of the show. We're back with this explosive debate after this.
Welcome back to tonight's big question. Are ARVs the most effective treatment for HIV AIDS? Yes, this is a very explosive and personal debate because at the end of the day, we're talking about people's lives. People are dying every single day from HIV AIDS. Current statistics are saying that almost 600 people are dying a day in South Africa from HIV and AIDS. Alternative treatment is often slated from a scientific perspective. Africa has always had its traditional and faith healers and many South Africans only have access to these healers. Does the government then have a moral duty to give preference to traditional treatments and, if need be, fund the necessary trials to investigate their value? Let's take a look. Perhaps one of the biggest reasons to be suspicious of ARVs is the questionable behavior of pharmaceutical companies. AIDS is a big business and a cheap cure won't reflect well on year-end profits Dr. Maxwell is a scientist who believes he has found an effective treatment for HIV AIDS, but he has said to mortgage his house to prove it works. His machine kills opportunistic viruses by delivering treatment directly to cells through particle transfer technology. Clinical tests prove that it works. What's more, it's cheap and safe. Are antiretrovirals the most effective treatment for HIV and AIDS? It wasn't developed for AIDS. It was developed as an anti-cancer drug and then it was shelved until recently when it suddenly became the anti-AIDS drug. We've had here a patient who had treatment with ARVs. He had been treated for a long time. His total viral load was 170,000 and using treatment with Lectroject over 10 days came down to 90,000. Dr. Maxwell, how do we know that you're onto something real and not just another eccentric scientist? GlaxoSmithKline is spending $27 million to develop this machine, this very same machine. Um, the problem is that they are, they are working on the machine that we had 10 years ago. So even once they've completed this, they will still be 10 years behind us. What's your opinion on pharmaceutical companies? As far as big business goes, I would say that um, they want this technology. They don't want to share the pie. The Treatment Action Campaign is synonymous with AIDS in South Africa. These brave activists have taken government to court repeatedly and forced them to deliver ARVs to the masses. Despite the bureaucratic challenges of the ARV rollout, the TAC has no doubt about the benefits of this drug. As TAC, we promote uh, positive living, wellness, we promote good nutrition. But the message that we want to send out is that none of the above substitute the efficiency and the efficacy of antiretrovirals. So uh, to a person who is living with AIDS, you know exactly that there comes a time for you to take antiretrovirals and nothing else but antiretrovirals because we, have, we know that they restore dignity of people. Is there proof that ARVs have lowered morbidity rates and actually prolonged life? The study conducted in Cape Town found that people with a CD4 count of 200 who do not take ARV medicines have a 35% chance you know, of survival as compared to people who are on ARVs who, are, who have at least 80% chances of survival within a three years period. Why do you think people like Dr. Rath and Anthony Brink are opposed to ARVs? There's a possibility that if they promote their own, you know, a concussion, their multivitamins, chances are high that they might make money too. There's a, there's a number of, um, of alternative medication that is uh, it's under research, you know, through the Medical Research Council. So we hope, you know, at the end of the day, good results will come out of that. But the fact is that at the moment, we know that ARVs have been researched and there's overwhelming evidence in terms of their efficacy. Dr. Zan, I'm going to kick off with you and say, how morally just is it to advocate antiretrovirals when the majority of people in our country do not have access to them and cannot access them? It, I, you know, I think that a lot of the statements in that insert were uh, past statements. So the, uh, the price of antiretroviral therapy when I started practice uh, as a physician in the care of HIV uh, individuals uh, was in the region of 4,000 rand a month. The recent pricing to the Department of Health on government tender is in the region of 130 rand a month. That equates to the treatment of uh, hypertension with first-line 
treatment. It's a lot cheaper than insulin for diabetes. And so there's no question anymore that the, the profiteering has disappeared. That's, we must congratulate the Minister of Health and her, uh, and her challenges to the pharmaceutical industry for the manufacture of generics. So the question it, you asked was, is it morally justifiable? I think what's morally not justifiable is to waste a debate about whether these drugs work. And we should, in fact, be having a debate on how fast and how quickly can we roll out antiretroviral therapy to the, to the most sites in South Africa. I was recently in the Northern Cape. They are desperate to, in fact, get a number of site, government rollout sites initiated in the Northern Cape with populations in queuing of up to six mm -hmm. months to access this treatment. Well, but two things must be Before I come to, to your two things, I want to come to you, Dr. Rasnik, and try and understand in terms of the vitamins that are being sold, how accessible and financially reasonable are they in terms of cost? Well, before I, uh, I answer that, I have to respond to uh, uh, this just a little bit. The ancient Romans said it best, qui bono, who benefits? President Bush's $15 billion PEPFAR program is a simple money laundering scheme to transfer the wealth of American taxpayers into the bank accounts of the pharmaceutical cartel. Treatment Action Campaign and other brown shirt organizations play a, nece a necessary role in, the, in this uh, grand extortion by setting the limits on permissible discourse. It's their job to make the expensive antiretroviral drugs look like an essential good that is being denied poor people. The drug companies don't mind being uh, the bad guys as long as they get their ransom. Uh, so Doctor, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you there and direct the question to you in terms of qui bono. Right. In terms of the cost right. of these vitamins. Right. The, how right now they're, they're completely free in the, in, and they will be forever in South Africa. We have not sold a single pill in this country and we do not intend to. We give these pills away. In the Kailicha study in, uh, near Cape Town, that was the most moving experience in my life after studying AIDS for a quarter century to see all of these people in that study, all of their AIDS-defining diseases, reverse as a consequence of taking these mi micronutrients. So and these free. were free. So I must, it didn't cost I'm a gonna, cent. I must quickly interject there. Kailicha is one of the most successful antiretroviral therapy rollout sites in the country. These people were not on my the colleagues, drugs. My colleagues, uh, Professor Wood and uh, Catherine Oral, are doing a sterling job of reaching many members of the community. So I would be careful about how your claims are. Can, these can, can these people respond? did not take the drugs. Can Coming I just to... respond by saying that uh, what is being said is interesting, and I like that. And what we advocate in Sepang is that ARVs should be made available free of charge to every South African that needs them. Now, whatever he is providing for free, somebody pays to make it. And we should collectively sit as a nation, answer the question that you asked Ian. Why are people not having access? That's what we should be debating. Why aren't people we need, taking them? We need 800,000 people need to be on ARVs. Why only 100? And if there's alternative therapies that can prove to be effective and safer, why are they not being properly funded so that they are properly researched? We're looking for what will help the people. Mm -hmm. And to go back to your question that you asked, my alma mater, University of KwaZulu-Natal, Nelson Mandela Medical School, is doing a collaborative research with traditional healers because they are being used extensively. And it's something of the past that we're not harnessing the best from both healing arts. There might be a traditional mixture mm -hmm. out there that might provide answers to HIV and AIDS. If the MRC is pouring money into researching this stuff. And what disturbs me is this either or mentality. There's a this place either where or mentality. Why is it and, either and, or? And, and, and let's and let's it's very respond simple. to that. It's very simple why it's either or. The retroviral drugs, as I've already said, have never been shown to prolong life or even improve the quality of life, regardless of what anybody said in here. They've never been shown that. And it's clear that they're extremely toxic. They're lethal. In fact, they're so, they're so toxic, they destroy the bone marrow and cause immune, immune deficiency, leading to a new syndrome that the AIDS orthodoxy is called immune reconstitution syndrome for those people that are taking the antiretroviral drugs. The diseases is called IRS. The diseases of IRS are identical with AIDS. Uh, and in fact, it, in fact IRS is just AIDS again, caused by the antiretroviral drugs. Dr. Dr. Resnick, yet again, is quoting vastly out of context. The iris syndromes are a syndrome that, in fact, lead where, where there's immune reconstitution provided by the antiretroviral therapy 
leading to an inflammatory response to the disease that is present, such as tuberculosis. Dr. Resnick, uh, my, again, my colleague that I can do, quote, do you Professor that? Wood in, <laughs> in Cape Town. Let's, let's bring uh, Professor Mshamba uh, in here. Yeah, I've been very quiet, you know, sir. Yeah, I've been, You've very, been very quiet, quiet. You know, because I don't like a shouting match. Uh, I say things and I keep quiet. Uh, the position is this. In 1960, uh, uh, the, the, there were claims about uh, the, uh, the value of using thalidomide by a lot of doctors in the United Kingdom. I trained in the United Kingdom, and uh, Dr. Clapper knows this because he stayed at my house in England when he came to specialize. Your point, sir, sorry. Yeah, uh, my point is uh, uh, there was a lot of denial about the toxic effects of thalidomide. You just go to the UK today and see these adults now with no limbs at all. They said that now the advocacy of these antiretroviral therapies, despite the evidence from manufacturers, he has read them, and I'm not going to repeat mm -hmm. that, uh, it concerns me that, that the doctors advocate this Sorry. with missionary zeal. Uh, can, so I, can, I, can I just point out a few things? We report truthfully, we report clearly. There are side effects, and we report them truthfully. People live, we report them truthfully. It prolongs lives. We have a constitutional court judge, Edwin Cameron. He's living with HIV and AIDS. Read the book, learn. What we have to concentrate on, Mas Chama, is how do we save the many people that are falling off the cliff whilst looking for better treatment options. For now, in late stage disease, ARVs offer not only hope, they delay the time of parents passing on, they delay the age of orphanages, they restore people to good health so that they can go home and alleviate the poverty that the disease inflicts upon us. We have too many parentless homes. Poverty is rising. And what we need to do is to constructively engage to say there's a three quarters of a million South Africans that need life-saving medications. Okay. There's a need for proper answers. Let us work together to save ourselves as a nation. I Let's don't want work to together. argue. That you is know, what Dr. Litlapa is what advocating the lady and saying about, people she says she are has dying. Let them be made we'll available. We'll come and talk about that. It's time for a short break. Don't go away. Because when we come back, we're going to hear what our studio audience have to say. And so far, I think they're as passionate as our panelists here. Are ARVs the most effective treatment for HIV AIDS? Remember to cast your vote by phoning 083-920-3001. If you want to SMS, send the word yes or no to the same number. And we'll have those results at the end of the show. We're back after this. Shoo. Question, are ARVs the most effective treatment for HIV AIDS? Now, Dr. Latape, just before the break, said it would be wonderful if everybody can come together and work together towards finding a solution. How possible is this, considering the all-or-nothing approach that each side seems to be taking? Well, it's time to hear from our studio audience questions or comments for our panelists, and I'm going to request that you keep your questions or comments short um, so we can take as many members of the audience as we can, please. Leanne? Master Chaba, Blaze told me that when he was diagnosed with HIV AIDS, he was extremely ill, he was dying. And his doctor wasn't very hopeful, but put him on ARV. Seven years later, Blaze is so healthy, he says medically he's healthier than he was at the age of 18. That's got to be good news. Is a gent who'd like to say something? Yeah. <clears throat> My name is Gordon Mtembo. Yeah, it's unfortunate because some of the people who are taking decisions about us, as I'm, I'm a person living with HIV and AIDS, and here are some of them. Uh, when I started taking the ARVs, my CD4 count was 37, but now it has improved up until 284. It's unfortunate because people like Rath, Rath and the Raznik of this world don't know what they're talking about. Number one, they come here to exploit us as people living with HIV and AIDS. The question of choice is important. 
we will and we want to work together with the tra traditional healers. If they can prove that their uh, vitamin pills have been tested, then maybe that's fine. But if they keep okay. on making these allegations, I mean, they are not welcome in South Africa. Dr. Resnick, how do you respond to the point that um, this is a business venture and people are being exploited for monetary purposes? I agree completely. It's a business venture and people are being exploited uh, by the pharmaceutical industry. I have no, uh, no disagreement with, with that at all. Uh, that's not true with the Rath Health Foundation because, as I said before, we haven't sold a single pill in this country and we will not sell any pills in this country. We are here to demonstrate a principle that okay. nutrition is a very effective way to deal with the diseases of poverty and malnutrition. Okay. Aaron? Much of I spoke to Criselda Kananda of Kaya FM's Positive Talk. She is healthy, she is happy, she is emotionally and spiritually fulfilled. Criselda is living proof that there are alternative, effective methods of treatment to HIV-AIDS other than ARVs. I've got a gentleman here. Okay, my name is Winston. I've, uh, just to, to clear the air a little bit, I've helped a child of five years old who had a CD4 count of 19 at the beginning of September last year to 200 CD4 count by the beginning of uh, October. It's been one month from 19 to 200 CD4 count to raise. Now, my question is, I'd like to ask the, the people who advocate the, the ARVs, is why, if this drug is so effective, so, so safe, why do they refuse to give people who are at the onset of TB, why don't they give the TB treatment together with the ARVs? Why doesn't somebody who has pneumonia also okay. get the ARVs at the same? Why do they wait for the infections first to go away before they start treating them with the, with the other drugs? Dr. Zane? You see, this is exactly the type of question and exactly what we should be debating here rather than having the kind of debate that we have. Lovely. Because so this is important patient. information. It's important to know that uh, TB treatment uh, is uh, in its own right difficult. It's four drugs, some of them in their own right cause liver toxicity. Mm. Now combined with antiretroviral therapy, it has to be the correct treatment regimen of antiretroviral therapy so that there's no drug interaction, so that the drugs don't fight each other. And that's Firstly, the drugs aren't allowed to fight each other. There's also overlapping toxicity. In other words, they cause together an additional effect on the liver, and we acknowledge that completely. Okay. And, and thirdly, it's critically important that somebody who's diagnosed with TB first is initiated on TB treatment for two months before starting ARVs. Okay. But let me say very clearly, now this is important for the public. There's lots of people out there with TB and HIV. What's critically important is both need to be treated properly with, and, and the person will survive. Okay. Leon? There's a lady up there. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tandy, and I'm HIV positive for seven years now, and I'm taking antiretrovirals for six months now. And yeah, I am. I'm healthy. I didn't develop any side effects for now, and my child, she's also on on the ARTs, so she didn't have any problems she, since she started the treatment. So for me, ARTs, for people who are living with HIV, is the best. So even if we, are, we do have, we do living a, a healthy lifestyle, even if you are on treatment like me, I'm living a healthy style now, I'm on okay. H, uh, ARTs, everything is okay. fine. Thanks for the comment, ma'am. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, if we show time and time again, that we reverse people with full-blown AIDS to HIV positive or whatever, without antiretrovirals, why would we need to use them? And if you keep on saying that we should do uh, studies with it, I can't fund those by myself, but if you're getting the money, as you said, then you should actually fund this, because I've proven time and time again that this lemons and olive oil and garlic and ginger that everybody keeps on laughing at does work. We've had people with CD4 counts mm -hmm. of one that okay. have now got a normal range and viral loads of undetectable. Dr. Zanek? So I guess this is a research question again. I, I actually am one of the investigators who has achieved uh, getting a complementary medicine study through the Medicine Control Council. And I think that if there are results that are this fantastic, then we should investigate it. But it's not in the exclusion of antiretroviral therapy. 
And so I would challenge um, to say that probably, uh, and probably the place of complementary medicine and nutrition is before people but go below CD4 count 200. Dr. Zana, Tin is saying that she does not have the money to fund this research. So what happens then? How can we say that we are looking at alternatives when there is no money to fund this research or these trials? No, they, no that's not true. I think that if one has a good premise and goes to a, a correct academic institution, then the National Institute of uh, Complementary and Alternative Medicine in the United States has about $150 million that they are finding a home for, uh, for the study of complementary and alternative medicine. We are struggling with time. We've heard from both sides. Well, now it's your chance to answer the big question. Are ARVs the most effective treatment for HIV AIDS? If you haven't voted yet, this is your last chance to call us on 083-920-3001. Or you can SMS the word yes or no to the same number. And after the break, we'll have those final results for you. And we'll see how our studio audience votes. So don't go away. We're back after this. <laughs> Welcome back to tonight's hot big question. Are ARVs the most effective treatment for HIV AIDS? It's time for Leanne and Aaron to see if they've been able to sway the studio audience to their side of the argument. Leanne? Thanks, Mr. Chava. All your votes at home have been counted, but before we hear the results, let's hear what our studio audience thinks. Hands up those of you who are on my side of the argument that ARVs are the most effective treatment for HIV AIDS. Well, Leanne, do you want me to come in at the stage? Don't comment, check? don't comment, just continue. <laughs> okay, hands up if you believe my side of the argument that ARVs are not the most effective. Well, it's very clear, Leanne, that I win this one. I'm actually had, um, very encouraged to see that people believe that a healthy lifestyle is all it takes. I'm, I'm surprised and a little confused because I know in, in the circles in my life, ARVs work. Mm. They show results. Masa Java. Well, the majority of this audience has clearly spoken and loudly and said that ARVs are not the most effective treatment for HIV and AIDS. And interestingly, you at home agreed with them. Let's get a final comment from our panelists. Dr. Letape, audience is saying that uh, ARVs are not the most effective treatment. Intensive public education is what is necessary. Safe relationships and prevention are still key. But when you come to the stage where you need ARVs, they provide the best hope and we have to teach people to choose to live Dr. rather Rasmus? than to choose to die. You've had 20 years to educate people about these drugs. If they haven't uh, accepted it by now, they never will. Dr. Zane? It just goes to show that we shouldn't be having this kind of debate that just enhances confusion. And uh, in principle, we are absolutely convinced, our patients are convinced, we have cues for antiretroviral therapy, we are saving lives, and it's time that we educated the public and, uh, educate, uh, and accessed, increased the access to free antiretroviral therapy provided by the government. Professor Mflau? Yeah, I, I don't accept that uh, this uh, uh, promotes confusion. The people of South Africa uh, have to have a right to have a choice, and they have to hear what uh, both sides of uh, the story is all about. And uh, they have decided tonight uh, what the position is. It okay. is your job to go on trying to uh, dish out these toxic antiretroviral therapies. On that note, we're going to stop it. Thank you for a great debate, gentlemen. Remember to carry on debating on our website. You can go to www.thebigquestion.co.za. Join us again next week when we ask the big question, do we have a duty to do more for illegal immigrants? Until then, good night. If you have any comments to make about the big question, or if you'd like to be part of our studio audience, call us on 083-920-3001 or email us on comments at thebigquestion.co.za. You can also carry on debating on our website. Go to www.thebigquestion.co.za.